Well, good morning and welcome to Holy Trinity SE20. Welcome to those who are in church and those who are watching online. Today, we join with those remembering with thanks the life and service of Prince Philip, who died at the age of 99 on Friday. We also hold Her Majesty the Queen and the rest of the royal family in our prayers. One of the many things Prince Philip will be particularly remembered for was his work with young people through the Duke of Edinburgh Award. We know that he will have been deeply saddened, as we all are, at the stabbing of a 17-year-old teenager in Sydenham High Street last night. So today, we also lift the teenager's family and the community in our prayers. As we begin this service, we're going to have a, a minute's silence, remembering the death of Prince Philip and this 17-year-old teenager. Let's be quiet for a moment. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We continue this act of worship as we say Psalm 16. The men will say the odd numbered verses and the women the even numbered verses. Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are more lo my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. I say of the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out libations of blood to such gods or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad. And my tongue rejoices, my body also will rest secure. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. struck by that last verse, you will make known to me the path of life. And we take up that theme as we have our first two songs, Wherever You Lead Me, sung by the children, and Guide Me, O, o Thy Great Redeemer. You might like to stand as we join in.
would you like to say? We say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secret sight cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And let us in a few moments just think of the ways in which we have offended God and what we've done wrong and in what we've not done when we should have done things. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in units of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so we join together in the special prayer for the second Sunday of Easter. We pray together, Risen, Risen Christ, for whom no door is locked, no entrance barred, open the doors of our hearts that we may seek the good of others and walk the joyful road of sacrifice and peace to the praise of God the Father. Amen. Now Colleen is going to do our first reading. Our first reading is 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, you greatly rejoice though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, 
you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That's an amazing beginning to our reading. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus. And we remember Jesus as our Redeemer as we hear and or sing our next hymn. There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son. And we're going to have the gospel reading now. Our gospel reading is taken from John, chapter 20, verses 19. To 31. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. 
On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nails in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book, but, but they are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you, O Christ. Good morning, everyone. I'm back in church. <laughs> it's good to see you not just to see you on the screen. It's been a bit scary this morning coming back for the first time, but uh, it's okay now. And this morning, we, you probably worked out that this morning we're looking at Thomas, and we know that Thomas was known as Doubting, so we're going to have a look at why he was known as Doubting Thomas. I think we often think that Doubting is, is something that's a negative thing, negative feeling. We think that it's wrong for people to doubt. But it's natural for each and every one of us as we process our thoughts. We all have doubts at times in our life. I'm sure even Nick's had doubts at times. Have you not, Nick? Absolutely. I have to catch Nick out now. <laughs> in this terrible time of the virus, many might be tempted to think, where were you, God? Where are you, God? Why don't you stop this? Are you really there? Everyone goes through doubts in their faith. There are times for many of us when we may doubt that God hears our prayers. Sometimes we wonder why when people close to us die despite our prayers or we go through a great challenge like our current crisis. Everyone, as I said before, has doubts. And they're actually good for us because they drive us back to the risen, risen Lord for answers. As a result of doubt, often faith becomes stronger. Today we read about, we read about Thomas who had doubts and how G Jesus addressed them. Now, when we hear the name Thomas, the first thing we think of and identify him as Doubting Thomas. But we must not forget that Thomas was just as committed as the other ten disciples, perhaps even more so in many ways. Just weeks before Easter, Jesus told the disciples that he had to go to Bethany 
because his friend Lazarus was very sick. Most of the disciples warned him not to go because of all the hatred towards him that was being stirred up in nearby Jerusalem. In John chapter 11, verse 16, we see that at this time it was Thomas who said, let us also go that we may die with him. Thomas was willing to put his life in danger. And again, there's a response from Thomas that is very important. In John chapter 14, Jesus was telling his disciples that he had to go away to prepare a place for them. Jesus told them that they knew the way. But Thomas was perplexed. He wasn't going to, he didn't know what Jesus was talking about. But he didn't just do like many of us do when someone tells us something, just pretend that we know what they're talking about. Just like, oh yeah, of course. But Thomas was brave enough to ask the question on everyone's mind. As he said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can we know the way? I'm quite pleased he asked that question. Because Jesus' answer helps us to understand today. And we've struggled to understand it without that answer. Even now we know what happens to Jesus and we know the truth. So Jesus answered with one of my favourite verses as he said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Thomas had not pretended to know what Jesus was talking about. On that first Easter morning, the two Marys encountered the risen Lord, as did Peter and John. Jesus had just died on the cross, and the disciples were grieving their loss and were also afraid. Most were in a room. In many ways, it seemed to me that they were in their own lockdown, as we have been in previous months. They were unable to go out and get support from their family and they were in a mess. Then on Sunday night, 10 of the disciples met Jesus face to face. Christ at that time answered any possible doubts as he showed them his hands and his side, proving to them it really was him. But where was Thomas? We don't know the answer to that question. But just imagine his reaction when others told him, We saw him alive. Thomas replied, okay, show me. Now it's okay to say that he's a doubter at this stage, but I think it's a bit unfair. After all, the others had actually seen Jesus. And I struggle to think of anyone who would at that time reacted differently. So let's think about Thomas' example as we, like him, go through our own times of doubt. How can we defeat defeat those doubts? When we're really down, really depressed, it's not a time to make rash decisions, like deciding to go out and buy a new car or resign from a position or job. We need to give ourselves time to get through the low times before we act impulsively. And so it is with doubts. It's good to try not to give in to them in the midst of our depression. Try to just recognize them for what they are, doubts. And when we work through our doubts, it can mean that at the end we can have a stronger faith. Now each person reacts differently to their doubts and grief. And Thomas was certainly having a rough time. His Lord had just been crucified. His life was in danger and his hopes were dashed. Maybe that's why he was away. He was just grieving by himself. We don't know for sure. But fortunately, he didn't do anything rash. Eventually, he returned to his friends, his fellow disciples. Now, each of us can draw strength from others, just like the disciples drew drew strength from themselves. Thomas missed Jesus' visit because he had left his fellow believers. 
It's okay to doubt and to explore and to find the truth. Often, like Thomas, our faith can be strengthened. Now, I remember before I made a commitment, I had many doubts. In fact, I tried to prove, prove to myself that Christianity wasn't true. I tried very hard, actually. I read many books. I asked many tricky questions, and I had lots of blustering and blustering from various church-going people. I even went to church in order to prove that it was a load of rubbish. And as a result, I believe my doubts proved to be constructive and led to my coming to faith. I can honestly say that I really did try hard to actually prove it wasn't true. I have since on many occasions doubted, especially when life is a bit tricky. After each time, though, my faith has been restored, I still managed to, to be a pain, asking many questions. I'm sure Nick will actually confirm that. Talking my doubts through with others. And that's what we need to do, is we need to talk it through with others. We need our fellow, our rest of our family, Christian family. And also for new, young people, new people into it. Alpha is a good opportunity for people seeking to address their doubts. And if you're interested, I'm sure that there'll be another Alpha in the coming months. We need each other. We need, when we feel least like going to church, that's when we need to the most. When we most want to hide out, that's when we need to force ourselves to reach out to others. If not in person, then by phone or by social media. If you separate a piece of coal from the rest of the fire, what happens? It goes out. Many of us have struggled through the lockdown as we were isolated. Many members of our church family have been badly isolated from the church family. And for them, it has been even more difficult. Together, we are the body of Christ. And it should be that when one hurts, the whole body hurts. When one celebrates, the whole body celebrates. After all, we're told where two or more are gathered, even when socially distanced, Jesus is there in the midst. So it would be good if we could all pick up the phone and ring someone that we haven't seen on Zoom or spoken to for a while to catch up with them. We need each other to fight off our doubts. Jesus speaks to us directly in verse 29 when he says, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed, blessed are those who, who have not seen and yet have believed. One of the things that actually can trigger doubt is fake news. And fake news is indeed nothing new. Perhaps today in the world of it, it may be more dangerous in an age of information, technology, technological advancement. Fake news, for some reason, seems to be more credible often than truth. So how do we really find out the truth? We find by reading the Bible. We find by talking to others. And it's by actually speaking to others that have had that experience. I was speaking to Nick the other day about when my bees swarm. It's a really, truly amazing sight and sound. And if you want to know what it's like, it's much easier to speak to someone who's actually witnessed it rather than just trying to imagine what it would be like. There is nothing that can actually, that you can actually imagine is like a swarm of bees. The noise is like a helicopter taking off and all these thousands of bees swarming out of a hive, all collecting up. But that's why we need each other, to encourage each other and to talk through our doubts, to talk through with people that have experienced life, a Christian life, to speak to people that have had those, probably had those same doubts and work them through. Someday we won't need faith anymore because we shall behold him face to face. But until then, we put our hope in the risen Lord. 
even when we don't have all the answers. In order to defeat those doubts, we need to meet the risen Lord. God gives us evidences of his, of his existence every day. And that's what it did it for Thomas. He had proof, evidence, who then fell on the ground and proclaimed, my Lord and my God. He didn't need to touch Jesus' scars. For him, seeing was believing, as it was for all those other eyewitnesses. And there are so much evidence around us in our world today. We hear him speak in our thoughts as we read scripture. We see his beauty in the creation and his love through the kind act or, of a friend or a spouse. We see his redemptive work as someone discovers hope or meaning or peace. We see his faithfulness day after day as we know we do not walk this life alone. We need to note that as Jesus entered that room that day, he knew that Jesus had, that Thomas had got those doubts. And the first thing Jesus said was, peace be with you. There was no scolding. Jesus knew how Thomas felt. He met him where he was. His hurt and doubts Jesus had once again appeared to the disciples. Suddenly, in the midst of their pain and suffering, in the midst of their doubt and disbelief, in the midst of their disobedience, Jesus appears to them. Without a fanfare, there was no fanfare or anything like that, without announcement, and without even the benefit of a door. And he breathed his peace. Peace be with you in the midst of our lost doubt, questions, fears. Jesus comes and gives us peace that surpasses all understanding. Peace that is beyond physical human comprehension. Peace that can change our grief into joy. The difference is we are not alone anymore in the midst of our trials and tribulations, in the midst of our grief and confusions, in the midst of our suffering and shame, God is with us through the Holy Spirit. Now this week we've had the sad news of the Duke of Edinburgh sadly dying. But, but it isn't just the fact that he had died. He's also stirred up many memories many people of their own loss, the loss of a loved one, especially during lockdown. The pain is still fresh in their minds, in their hearts. And so that what we've been going through this week with the news and everything has actually brought that back to life and made it again painful, more painful than it was. Now, Lucy Brownlee, I think I've got that wrote, um, her name right, wrote, grief is something to get o isn't something to get over. Time doesn't shrink the massive impact. Loss has on our own whole being. Instead, we find ways to adapt. Our lives grow around our grief. But there's the good news. Jesus meets us where we are. In happy times or bad. In painful times. And he is offering peace. Peace that this world doesn't understand. A peace that doesn't always change the circumstances of our life. But, but a peace that offers us the same hope that the disciples must have experienced that first night in the upper room. Jesus is offering us peace and hope, a hope for the future. And so I'm going to finish and echo with the words of Peter from 1 Peter 1, verses 8 to 9. 
And he was no doubt recalling this particular event with Thomas when Thomas got to see his risen Lord. And he was writing to young believers. And it reads, Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with the in, an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for Thomas, who had real doubts and wanted evidence over blind faith. Jesus, thank you that you met him where he was, and thank you that we'll, you will do the same for each and every one of us. Help us to take care when we are feeling down, to surround ourselves with, lo with your loving believers, and to bring our doubts to you, the risen Lord, knowing that you are more than sufficient in all ways. Amen. Thank you, Janice. Lots of things to think about and real encouragement in that word. God is with us all the time through his spirit. Jesus is with us. And we remember this as we sing, The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. And it says, And though I walk the darkest path, I will not fear the evil one, for you are with me. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my Yo! Yeah. 
Tamara is going to lead us in our prayers this morning. Let us pray. O oh Lord, sometimes we're not sure if the decisions we make are right. We doubt and worry. Show us, O oh Lord, the way. Let us understand that it's okay to be unsure, that it's normal and human. Reveal to us again where we can be certain. Show us the place where our doubts disappear. In the resurrection, we may find truth and security in, God, in knowing God exists and knowing he loves us. Make our trust in you unshakable. Even though it may be hard and our decisions might be wrong, let our hearts and souls know you will never leave us. May we seek you in prayer to receive the answers you want us to hear. May we find peace in the answers Christ gives us in his wounds. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your world and all the nations and their leaders, that all may work together for peace. We ask that they may be led to you, led by you, and that each decision be one that leads to justice and peace. We pray for our own nation at this difficult time and ask that we may ask that we may lead, be led by you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our local communities. We remember the family and friends of the teenagers stabbed to death last night. We pray for the young people drawn into gangs and to show us how we can bring your peace to our community. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for your church throughout the world that it would all work together to spread your word throughout the world. We pray for Christians who are perse persecuted by their beliefs. We pray for our churches, St. John's and Holy Trinity, as they begin to work together. We ask for guidance as we continue your work to give others in our community the chance to know your love and peace for themselves. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick, whether it be in mind, body, or spirit. Just spend a moment to think of those known to us. Father, we ask you to give them the hope and the courage they need today and every day. We ask you to comfort their pain, calm their fears, and surround them with your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Now we're going to pause a moment and remember the life and faithful service of the Duke of Edinburgh. Lord of Lords and King of Kings, we give you thanks for the life of Philip Duke of Edinburgh, for the grace and mercy he received from you, for his faithful love and support of Her Majesty the Queen, and his service to this nation at home and abroad. Lord, in your mercy, most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding. Surround the Queen and the royal family with your love, that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
And so as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to stand if you are able to do so as we affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. And we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, a holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection, resurrection of the body, body and, and the, the life, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We're reminded in our gospel reading how Jesus came and stood amongst the disciples and he said, peace be with you. And he does the same with us today. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another for the sign of peace. Peace to you. We bless you now in the name of the Lord. Peace to you. We bless you now in the name of the Lord. Peace to you, peace to you, we bless you now in the name of the Lord, peace to you, we bless you now in the name of the Prince of Peace, peace to you. So we come to that point in our service where we have uh, our notices. I've got, uh, first of all, to um, announce the bands of marriage. So I pronounce the bands of marriage between David James Habin and Jessica Susan Ross, both residents in this parish. Now this is the third time of asking, and if you know any reason in law why, why, why they should not get married, you are to declare it now. Well, that's the final hurdle for them. And so let's pray for David and Jessica. Lord, we thank you for the gift of relationships, the gift of marriage, and we pray your blessing upon David and Jessica as they prepare for their wedding day. Lord, may that day be a really special time. May it have a real sense of your presence, binding, to, binding them together in your love. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Well, all of you know about the Duke of Edinburgh, how he died on Friday, and there is much to give thanks for his life, and there's the opportunity to um, 
sign books of condolences online. There are two in particular, one through the Church of England website and the other through the Royal Family website. And so you can get those links on both those websites. And um, I did send those links in notes and notices. If you're still struggling over that, um, let me know, I can pass those links on to you. Next uh, Saturday at three o'clock will be the actual funeral um, of um, uh, the Prince and um, which uh, the Archbishop Justin Welby is going to be taking. And so at three o'clock, the nation will be observing uh, an hour, uh, sorry, a minute silence. So let's continue to pray for, for the royal family in their loss. And also, as Janice has reminded us, the um, death of the prince has also reminded us of the, the many people we know and love who died during the lockdown period. So let's be thinking of those people and reaching out to them as well. So let's be praying for our nation at this time of transition as we come out of lockdown. So can I really encourage you to take part in those opportunities of prayer coming together, um, our morning and evening prayer, which you can get the link for, the telephone number for that, um, through notes and notices. Again, be in touch with me if you can't get a, if you can't find the number. Yes, regular giving. Um, if you are wanting to give regularly and you're not using standard or standing orders or gift envelopes, do let me know or, or Edward and we can give you the appropriate information for both those forms of giving. Yeah, the Bible course. Having finished Alpha, um, we wondered what we should be doing after that. And we're going to be doing the Bible course, which is from the Bible Society. It's an amazing course. And it shows you, it takes you through the, the Bible, shows you what, how it fits together, the theme of God's story throughout Scripture. It's a wonderful um, course and using videos and discussions and so on. And that's starting shortly. And if you'd like to know more about that, do um, see the notice in Notes and Notices. And uh, otherwise, you can speak to Sue Thompson. Um, and again, if you need links for that, let me know. And yes, th this week we had the sixth um, session on um, racism and uh, using the book we need to talk about race by Ben Lindsay. I've I personally been learning a lot from that course and starting to see ways we can act on, on our concerns about this whole issue. And so the next um, discussion group will be on the 4th of May at 8 p.m. And we'll be looking at chapter seven, Jesus Walks. And just to remind you about the Trello board um, where you can add your comments about race on the Trello board. And um, let's continue to pray about that issue. Racism is still very much in evidence today and we really need to be pressing in on to, into this. And the church nationally needs to be look at addressing this particularly. And the final uh, image up there is the picture of our cross outside. Uh, lots of people being comment on, comment, uh, commenting on it. And so uh, thank you again to those who, who did that. But let's keep that, that account of the resurrection alive in our lives and be sharing the amazing good news that comes with the knowledge that Jesus is alive today. And so we take up that theme as we have our final hymn, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness.
So a final prayer of blessing. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord.